1522. The record should reflect that Mr. Holmes is present with his attorneys and the prosecutors are present as well. The record should further reflect that we are outside the presence of the jury at this time. I uh, had a chance to listen to um, the people's exhibit that the defense is objecting to based on Rule 403 of the Colorado Rules of Evidence. Um, evidence must be relevant to be admissible. That's under Rule 402. Evidence is relevant if it has any tendency to make the evidence of any fact that is of consequence to the determination of the action more probable or less probable than it would be without the evidence. That's Rule 401. Although relevant, evidence may be excluded if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice, confusion of the issues, or misleading the jury, or by considerations of undue delay, waste of time, or needless presentation of cumulative evidence. That's Rule 403. The defense is arguing that the probative value of this 911 recording is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. The uh, Colorado Court of Appeals has recognized that unfairly prejudicial evidence is evidence that has an undue tendency to suggest a decision on an improper basis, commonly but not necessarily an emotional one, such as sympathy, hatred, contempt, retribution, or horror. Uh, trial courts have broad discretion to decide whether relevant evidence is unfairly prejudicial to the defendant. Um, after listening to the recording, I find that it is probative, uh, it is relevant under uh, Rule 401, the definition of Rule 401, uh, and therefore it is admissible uh, as relevant under Rule 402. The question then is, is it admissible under Rule 403? And I find that it is. I find that its property value is not substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. Uh, and this is not unlike the analysis that I made with respect to some of the gruesome photographs. Are they gruesome? Yes. Is there um, uh, a danger for prejudice or are they going to be prejudicial? Yes. But is it unfair prejudice? No. Uh, and that's based on the nature of the crime. That's based on the allegations that are made. Uh, that's based on all the factors involved in this case. Um, given all those factors, given the nature of the crime that is alleged and the charges that have been filed, uh, this is not unduly prejudicial. It is not unfairly prejudicial. Obviously, the more um, as I stated, I think, in my order, D-98B, the larger the magnitude of a crime and um, the more gruesome a crime, then the more gruesome the evidence is going to be. But that's not because uh, it is being introduced to get the jury's sympathy or because it is being introduced to evoke an emotional reaction from the jury or hatred or contempt or retribution or horror from the jury. It is because it is a reflection of the crime that is charged and the people are entitled to prove uh, the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Not only are they entitled to do it, they're required to prove each and every element of every charge beyond a reasonable doubt. So for all those reasons, the uh, objection is overruled. Okay, let's bring the jury in, please. Ms. Tish McGuire, do you want to approach and retrieve the uh, disc? Please be seated, everyone. The record should reflect that the jury has joined us again. Welcome back, members of the jury. Thank you for your patience. I indicated to you 
earlier that there are times when I need to discuss things with the attorneys outside your presence. I'm required to do that by law. Please don't infer anything from that. Don't read anything into that. It's just part of the process, but I very much appreciate your patience. All right, with that, Ms. Tish McGuire, would you please call your next witness? Thank you, Your Honor. The people called Derek Sproul. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You solemnly swore or affirm in the penalty of law that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please be seated. Could you please tell us your full name? Uh, Derek Arthur Sproul. And can you spell your first, middle, and last name, please? D-E-R-I-C-K, <coughs> Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R, Sproul, S-P-R-U-E-L. Ms. Tishmawire, you may proceed. Thank you, Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Could you please um, tell us what you do for a living? I currently work for... Ms. Tish McGuire. Your Honor, I could lay a further foundation about why his um, occupation is relevant. He's in the military, and so his occupation in the military. All right, please approach. The objection is overruled. Go ahead, Ms. Tish McGuire. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Sproul, if you could please tell the jury what you do for a living. I currently work for the United States Department of Agriculture. And what was your occupation prior to working for the Department of Agriculture? I worked for 310 Space Wing. I was um, over the 710th Comm Flight, the um, superintendent for 710th Comm Flight. Is that a branch of the military? Yes, Air Force. Uh, I was over... Um, I was functionally responsible for all communication aspects at 310 Space Wing at Buckley Air Force Base. How long did you work there? Over two years. What were Over your... Three years, I'm sorry. What were your responsibilities in that job? Overruled. Uh, function, I was the, the superintendent for 17th Comm Flight. I was... Um, overall communication aspects for 310th. We took care of uh, computer support, um, crypto, anything to do with c communication for the 310 Space Wing. Could you tell the jury what crypto means? Crypto is basically the way you would encrypt information and then decrypt it on another end for the receiver. So basically you would have secure communications. Were you at the Century 16 movie theater on July 19th of 2012 in Aurora, Colorado? Yes, ma'am. Did that go into the early morning of July 20th of 2012? Yes, ma'am. How did you decide to go to that movie? We were um, talking about that movie for a while in the office. We were pretty excited about Batman coming out. Um, on the 19th, my wife and I was off, and Jesse Childress... Uh, called us and asked if we wanted to go and that he would pay for the tickets. He really wanted us to go. Could you please tell the jury who your wife is? What's her name? Chi Chi Sproul. And could you please tell the jury who Jesse Childress is? Jesse Childress uh, was working for me at the time and a good friend. And when he was working for you at the time, was that in the Air Force? Yes, ma'am. And what was his position in the Air Force with you? Jesse was a was a cyber operator and he was performing client support tech, he was a, uh, any position, client support technician position. How long have you known him? I uh, knew Jesse since I was there, so basically about three years or more. And what was your relationship with Jesse? We were friends and I think we were becoming, you know, closer friends. We were doing more things together, hanging out, 
Um, of course, like calling me, wanting us to get together for the movies. We were good friends. Whose idea was it to go to Batman? I, I believe uh, Jesse was one of the main people pushing it because, like I said, it was something exciting in the office. We all were anticipating it coming out. And, and he was like one of the main ones, like, we got to see it. We're going to see it. How did you get to the movie theater that day? I, I drove to the movie theater, drove Chi-Chi and I to the movie theater. How did you get your tickets that day? Jesse purchased the tickets for us re, one, um, while he was calling once he wanted to buy the tickets so that we all would go. What happened when you got to the movie theater parking lot? Uh, Jesse was outside waiting for us. We, we, um, we got there and, um, and um, we basically we had to wait for Gravelli to come. So, um, yeah, we, we got there and we met, and met up with Jesse in front of the theater. Who's Gravelli? Um, uh, I was about to say Sergeant Gravelli. Anemone Munir Gravelli. She also worked for me as a client support technician. She was TDY there at the time. At the Air Force? Yes, at the, at the base, yes. Did you have any hesitation about going into the movie theater when you pulled into the movie theater parking lot? My wife had the hesitation. She... Um, we had previously went to that movie theater when we first got to Aurora, and it was such a hard thing because um, the whole presence of the of that movie theater was was bad. Like the floors were sticky, the service was bad. So when we left, she said, "We're not coming back to this movie theater." And I, and I, like, you know, okay, we, I'm sure there's more um, other movie theaters. So when we were when we were driving there, she was saying the whole time, like, Derek, it's that movie theater. I'm like, no, it's not the movie theater. I'm sure it's going to be the IMAX movie theater or whatever. And the closer we got to it, I was like, it's, the, it's that movie theater. She said, I do not want to go into that movie theater. And I told her, I said, Jesse purchased the tickets. We're going to go. So we went. We continued to, to proceed to the movie theater. <coughs> Approximately what time was it when you went into the movie theater? I say it was close to 11. I couldn't give you approximate time, but we waited for for Moni, and I think it was it was close to 11, if not after 11. I, I can't what, remember specifically. What did you do when you went into the movie theater? We went we we um, went to the concession stand. Um, I can't remember exactly what we bought, but I know we bought stuff. And um, then, you know, we retrieved the, the tickets, got, went to the concession stand, and then went into the movie theater. Do you remember what movie theater you went into? It was nine. How'd you go about finding your seats? Uh, basically, we were uh, basically looking for enough room for all of us, of course, and we didn't want to sit too close to the screen, so we, we saw... That, route, that that area on the third row that was close to the right if you were facing the screen. Your Honor, may I approach the witness with what's been marked as People's Exhibit 1168? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Do you recognize that document I just handed you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What is that document? Um, this is a, a document that I, I drew, I um, wrote where we were sitting, um, where I believe the canister um, had went, and where I seen the flash is coming from. All right, and does that document fairly and accurately represent what you observed in the theater on July 19th, 2012, until July 20th, 2012? Yes, ma'am, from what I can remember. Your Honor, at this time, I'd move for the admission of People's Exhibit Number 1168. Ms. Plank Spengler, is there any objection? No objection? Without objection, Exhibit 1168 is admitted and may be published. All right, so when you walked into Theater Number 9, how, where did you guys come in? We came in uh, from this picture from that left, from the left uh, entryway. And how did you go about finding your seats? We went down um, 
and came across and just went up the, the left, um, well, if you're facing the screen, the right stairs, and then came into the, to that, to that row. Where are, where did you find your seats eventually? Is it marked on that diagram? Yes, ma'am. Where's that? Um, it is on the fourth row. You said the fourth row. Is that in the stadium seating area or in the lower seating area? It's a stadium seating area. Okay, so is there like a 11 on the diagram near the yes, row? Yes, it says R11, yes, ma'am. What was the order of how you decided to sit? It was Chi-Chi, my wife, myself, Jesse, and Moni was on the left side, Jesse. What did you guys do while you were waiting for the movie to begin? <laughs> what Jesse and I always did, crack jokes and just you know, bounce jokes back and forth, uh, making jokes about stuff we've seen in the theater, the um, stuff going on in the office, just, just basically having a good time. Do you remember anything unusual at all happening while you were waiting for the movie to begin? No, I, um, I didn't notice anything before the movie, movie started. Do you remember if there were any previews before your movie? I do not remember any of the previews. I know that there were. But I don't, I don't recall any, any of them because, like I said, we pretty much talked all the way through. <laughs> At some point in time, did the movie start? Yes, ma'am. What happened after your movie start? Um, about 15, 20 minutes in, I um, heard loud blasts and seen flashes. Um, i be honest, my first idea was fireworks. Um, we had seen this, the, the, canner, um, the canister go across before and um, thought that it was a prank, to be honest. I feel bad to say it, but I've really tried to continue watching the movie. And what happened after you saw that canister? Um, after a while, you heard it. You heard that the loud pop and you started seeing, like I said, you saw the flashes and, and, the, and, and heard the blast. What did the loud pop sound like to you at the time? I, I would compare it to like an explosion or, or, or a gunshot, a loud, you know, bang. Do you have any experience with firearms, Mr. Sproul? Yes. Uh, I had to qualify while, while in the Air Force, fired the M16 and the AR-15. And is what you heard in the theater that night consistent with what you know to be gunfire? Yes. Uh, I did not recognize the, the first sets of shots, but after the AR was being fired, I identified it as, as an auto rifle. That's when I like, got scared. I started praying at that point. So you hear this first round of shots that you couldn't identify. What do you remember immediately after hearing the first round of shots? I remember... At that point, I told everyone to get down. Uh, Chi Chi was right below me, right by my, my legs. Um, Moni was in, in front of me. Um, I just... I rem just remember being being really scared, um, hearing hearing those gunshots. Like as I said, the 
was identifying I remember um, at some point where the, the uh, gunfire pausing, asking Moni like to start moving down because those seats were um, empty and, and trying to maybe start getting us to, to get out. But once the, the um, once the gunfire started back up, we we all just stopped and, and stayed where we were. Could you hear anything else in the theater going on at the time? You could hear uh, people. I, I heard. I remember hearing someone at during at the pause of the gunfire yelling to, um, telling people to run. Um, you um, could hear like a lot of screams, people um, yelling people's names. Um, it, it was really chaotic. It was really chaotic during that time. And after there was a pause, did you hear more gunfire? What did you hear? Yes. After the AR-15 stopped, you heard a, the, a handgun firing. I don't know how many times it fired, but there were shots from a handgun. How do you know it's a handgun? I, I fired the 9 mil, and it sounded close to that sound. I had to qualify with the 9 millimeter. So how many different types of weapons do you think that you heard being fired off in that theater? I believe it was three. I believe I heard three types of weapons. The the beginning would have been the sh shotgun. I distinctly knew there was a um, an auto rifle, and then I heard the, the handgun at the end. Did you ever see a shooter? No. When I when I looked during the those first blasts and saw the flashes, I could not make out what was down there to the right. I could not make out. I just seen the flashes. I don't know if it was due to the flashes, that it was so dark in that area, but I did not make anything out at that time. I really wish I did. Maybe we would have got down sooner, but I, I didn't make anything out. How would you describe those flashes that you saw? Like bright, like just bright. Bursts, like bright flashes. I did. I couldn't identify what it was at, at that that specific time, but I distinctly remember seeing the bright flashes and those. And like I said, I if you would ask me at that time, my my my, my thinking was like firecrackers or or someone playing a prank at that at that point when I seen that. Did you ever smell anything in the theater? Yes, uh, you smelled the gun powder and the tear gas or gas. Now, how do you think, why do you think you smelled gas? Well, I've smelled tear, the tear gas before in, in training. They, they would do tear gas for, you know, introduction to, to that smell. At the Department of Agriculture? No. <laughs> in the Air Force, sorry. <laughs> and so you were, had been exposed to tear gas in the military prior, and yes. what you smelled in the theater that night was a consistent Yes, with your yes, but you could also smell. It was uh, intermingled with the, the gunpowder also. I could smell from the, from the um, gunfire. So what do you remember next after lying on the floor in the theater? We stayed we stay there at the, on the floor. Um, I remember thinking, I was looking back towards the, the right side, towards the aisle, and, and, and just thinking to myself, if someone comes up the aisle, I have to do something. And I was just, I just, I was like, I'm going to die. That's what I was thinking the entire time, laying there on the floor. Um, we laid there 
and we laid there until we were told to get up. I, I stayed down even when the lights came on and they, they basically had to say, if you're not hurt, get up and get out of the theater. That, that's, when, that's when I got up, is when they told us to get up. What did you see when you got up? I think Jesse laying there I, I started yelling his name, and I, and I shook him, and I tried to pick him up. I could not pick, pick him up, and I, I just kept yelling. They once again had to tell us to, um, to get out of the theater. And wh when, you, when you were leaving, you saw bodies around, and um, right when going out of the exit, you saw like rounds on the on the ground going out of the exit when they took us out of the, out of the exit into the parking lot. What exactly were you saying when you were yelling Jesse's name? I, w I was yelling his name, Jesse, Jesse, and uh, and shaking him. Like I said, I tried, I really tried to pick him up. I could not. It was one of the big things stands out in my mind that I could not pick him up. I wanted him to come out with us. And you said when you were exiting, you saw some bodies. Do you know if those people were alive or dead at the time? I, I don't know. I don't. Mr. Sproul, sometimes you trail off. I'm going to ask you to speak right into the microphone, otherwise people can't hear you, okay? Yeah, I don't know if, um, I don't know if they were alive or dead. And then you also said you saw some rounds. What do, you yes. by, what do you mean by that? Um, the casings from the bullets, I saw them when we were, we were leaving out, out of that, um, through that area, that exit area, out into the parking lot. Who were you able to leave the theater with? I, I, I was able to leave with uh, my wife, Chi-Chi, and, and, and Moni. We, we, we all were able to walk out. Was Jesse able to leave with you? No, Jesse could not leave with us. What happened when you got outside of the theater? Um, saw a lot of chaos. I saw uh, the um, Aurora police being awesome. They were they were in charge. You know, they were um, separa separating everybody, attending the people. They wanted me to check myself. Um, See if I got shot because I had so much blood on me. Um, there was there was blood all over the pavement, leading leading out. I, um, I saw the the auto rifle on the ground, and um, but um, like uh, the biggest thing that stand out honestly was how well the Aurora police did. Like the the police were awesome. Now, after you got outside the theater, what happened to you and your wife and Moni? Moni was separated from us. We spoke to her. She told us that she was shot. She was waiting in the hand and that she was waiting for a transport. Um, they took us away, and um, I believe they were separating us into other groups of of uh, people who had family members that were injured and so forth, and then they took us to uh, Gateway High School. What happened when you got to Gateway High School? Uh, they took our statements, they took us in um, to the, I believe it was the gymnasium, and then they took our statements. What time did you get to leave Gateway High School? It was well into the next morning because my wife, Chi-Chi, and I did not want to leave until we knew what, you know, exactly what happened to Jesse. Were you able to know that? No, I did not find out until, until later when our co-workers came to notify us. And what co-workers came to notify us? They you? were, um, um, so bad, I can't remember their names. Um, were they people from the Air Force? There were people from the Air Force, and um, they generally send out, you know, three or four people to, to do the notifications, and they, and they did that. They sent uh, the, four, the four Air Force people to my house to notify us of what happened to Jesse. What did you learn? Uh, 
the scene. And were you notified that Jesse, in fact, had been Yes, there? yes. That's what they came to my house to do, is to notify me of what, what happened to Jesse. Were you able to attend any services for Jesse? Sustained. Do you know if there was a funeral for Jesse Tildren? Yes. Right. Your Honor, may I approach the witness with what's been marked as People's Exhibit 4726? Yes. Do you recognize what I've just handed you? Yes, this picture of Jesse Childress. Does it fairly and accurately represent what Jesse looked like prior to going to the theater? Yes, ma'am. Is that who was in the theater with you? Yes, ma'am. Person who didn't leave. Didn't end up getting to leave the theater that night. Ex yes, I, I had to leave Jesse. No further questions at this time. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Do you have any questions? I don't, and I don't object to um, this witness being released from the subpoena. All right. Ms. Tish McGuire, may uh, this witness be released from his uh, subpoena? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And there do not appear to be any questions from the jury, so you're free to go, sir. Thank you. And for the record, 4726 has been previously admitted, correct? Correct. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Call your next witness, please. People call Chi-Chi Sproul. Good morning. Finally swore or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, please be seated. Could you please tell us your full name and spell your uh, first and last names? Uh, my full name is Chi Chi Patience Sproul. My um, is C H I C H I. My middle name is P A T I E N C E. My last name is S P R U E L. Ms. Tish McGuire, you may proceed. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Sproul, will you please tell the jury what you do for a living? Um, right now, I'm a personal banker. And at the time of July 19th, 2012, what were you doing? I was a retail manager at a retail store. How long have you lived in Colorado? Uh, till date or at the time? At the time. Uh, Two years, I believe, or less. Now, were you married at the time? Yes, I was. And who were you married to? Derek Sproul. And what did your husband do at the time? Um, he was uh, a geek. <laughs> 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 Still is. Actually, he's, um, I guess is, I don't know, calm, pretend. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry. Do you know if he was in the military? Yes, he was in the military Air Force. Now, do you recall if you went to the Century 16 movie theater in Aurora, Colorado on July 19th of 2012? Yes, I did. And did that go into the early morning of July 20th of 2012? Yes, he did. And why were you going to the movie that day? Because apparently all the people at my husband's jobs are all geeks. So there was all of them, they had been talking about the Batman movie for like a week. And Jesse had just called us to stay to ask if we wanted to go, and Derek said yes. So did you go to the movie theater that night? Yes, I did. Do you recall what time you arrived at the movie theater that night? No, I do not. Um, and do you know what time the movie was about to start when the movie that you were going to go see? Midnight, I believe. And do you remember anything happening out in the parking lot when you got to the movie theater that night? Uh, the first thing I remember is the fact that I just, I realized, like I'd been telling my husband, that it was the same theater that we had been to that I didn't want to ever go back to, and we, it just dawned on us. And I was really about to turn around, but my husband was like, Jesse bought the tickets, so we're going to go. And I'm like, okay. Did you go into the movie theater? Yes, we did. <clears throat> and who did you go into the movie theater with? Jesse, Jesse, Moni, and my husband, Derek. What did you do when you got into the movie theater? Um, we got, I believe we got our tickets, bought popcorn and some drinks and headed into the theater. Do you remember what theater number you went into? At the time, no, but since then, theater nine. How did you go about choosing your seats? 
Um, I guess we're pretty much trying to find an area that was um, that had enough room for all four of us, and we could actually see the screen without being too close to it. Your Honor, may I approach the witness with what's been marked as People's Exhibit 1167? Yes. Yes, I do. What is that? Um, it's a diagram that I drew of the theater. Do you recognize the handwriting as yours? Yes, I do. And do you see your name and date on that document? Yes, I do. Does it fairly and accurately represent where you believed you were seated in the movie theater that night and other things that you observed in the theater that night? Yes, I believe so. Your Honor, at this time I would move for the admission of People's Exhibit 1167. Any objection? I do object to 1167. I'd make a hearsay objection as well as a 403 objection within the hearsay. The court looks at the diagram. It'll be self-explanatory. Give me just a second. Would counsel please approach for just a moment?
Okay, the objections are overruled. You may proceed. I think you had asked to admit Exhibit 1167, and so Exhibit 1167 is admitted, Ms. Tish McGuire, Thank and you. it may be published. Your Honor, may I approach the witness with a laser pen? Well, could you please describe for the jury what you wrote in your diagram and indicated in your diagram that you drew? Okay, so um, I put where I saw the lights, where I saw the. Uh, I put where I, uh, I put where, um, where I saw the lights, the canister, where I saw um, a victim in front of me who looked like he had been shot, and the way we entered the cinema. Could you? use that laser pointer and point on your diagram to where you entered the theater. We entered. Oh, on that on the TV behind you. Sorry. <coughs> so we entered from It kind of disappears on those screens. Okay. So we entered from here. This point here. How would you go about finding your seat? Uh, we um, like I said we pretty much just looked for somewhere that could accommodate all four of us where we could actually see the screen. Um, without being too far up, pretty much, and there were a lot of kids, so we were trying to also get away from the kids. <laughs> Could you show the jury where you were seated on your diagram with the laser pointer? So, I was seated where it says C right there, at least I believe I was. And who was sitting on your other side of you? Um, other side on my left was Derek. And who is sitting on the other side of you? I'm um, Jesse. And then there was Moni. All right. Now, what did you do while you got into the movie theater and waited for the movie to begin? Um, I, I believe I remember that everyone was kind of talking. Derek and Jesse were clowning like they usually do. Or when I say clowning, I mean they were joking around as they usually do. Um, Moni was at the other end. Jesse offered me popcorn. I was like, no, I'm not hungry. And we were just talking pretty much. Do you remember anything unusual at all happening before the movie began? Um, I just remember that it was really rowdy. And I turned to Derek and I said, you see, this is why I didn't want to be here. And he's like, it's OK. And um, I remember that there were costumes. There were, it was just, it was rowdy. <laughs> And when you say rowdy, was that unusual or was it people who were excited? I did and they wanted to watch Batman because people were wearing their costumes. It was a good atmosphere for everyone else at least. <laughs> and at some point in time were there previews before the movie? Yes, they were. And did the movie eventually begin? Yes, it did. What happened during your movie? Um, I remember that um, as we started watching it, I remember that, like okay, I remember this particular scene because this is when I first saw the whole thing go off was when um, I think that Batman has just seen Catwoman trying to steal his uh, jewelry from the safe. And I remember just seeing like a, uh, canister go up in the air with, like, then I saw lights on the other side going across, I guess. What did you think was going on at that point in time? I thought that kids were playing pranks. And I turned to my husband and said, <laughs> again, you see why we shouldn't be here? <laughs> I'm just saying. What do you remember after that? I remember that, um, I remember Derek turning to Jesse and they said something and Moni too and we just kept watching the movie really, quite honestly. And after that, what do you remember next? Well, I remember, okay, so this is my memory. I remember I heard, you know, sounds going off and I thought it was firecrackers or fire or whatever and I'm like, oh God, these kids are at it. Then I remember looking in front of my husband and seeing, um, a gentleman laying face up with looked like his head had been 
And so I'm like, oh my God, this is serious. People are actually hurting people with um, fireworks because I know, like I've heard fireworks hurt people. So I'm like, I turned to my husband and I said, oh my God, this guy is um, hurt. And he now goes, immediately says, I don't know if it's immediately, but I remember him saying that we should get down. And I remember crouch, um, crouching down. What do you remember hearing as you were crouching down? Oh uh, gosh. I just remember my terror, my terror, I was terrified, I was like, I just remember screams everywhere, I remember looking to the side of me, like to the right hand side of me, there was a gentleman there who had come with a friend, who a female friend who looked like she was injured, I remember my husband lying there with me and he wasn't moving, I remember being panicked, I remember calling 911 the first time, So you called 911. Why'd you call 911? Because I was panicked. I was like, I need someone to get us out of here because I didn't know. At the time, I was just scared. My husband wasn't moving. I was panicked. I was like, I didn't know if he was dead, you know. So I was praying. I just wanted to get out of there to assess the situation. If I was going to be mourning my husband, what was going on with my friends. It was just like a range of emotions. Were you able to see anything else while you were down on the floor? Not really. I just, I remember screaming. Like, I just remember people screaming, really. I just, I know I was trying to look um, in front of me to see the, you know, I was just panicked. I really, I, quite honestly, I wasn't trying to look, truth be told. I was just trying to get help. So after you made the first 911 call, what did you do after that? Um, I kind of um, was quiet. And then um, I just stayed getting really scared again, you know, because like I said, the person beside me seemed like his girlfriend um, or a friend, I don't know who she was to him, was injured. I, I knew that the guy, um, the person in front, sitting in front of my husband was injured. And so I just remember feeling terror. And, um, you know, honestly, at this point, I'm thinking like some whoever it was that was shooting was coming, going through rows and shooting all people because there were just so many screams and there were so many gunfires. So I called the police again. Your Honor, may I approach the witness with what's been marked for identification as exhibit number 1037? Yes. Do you recognize what I just handed you? Yes, I do. What is it? Um, is it this? Yes. Do you see your name on it? Yes, I do. Do you recognize that as your handwriting? Yes, it is. And is there a date on it? Yes, there is. Did you listen to that disc? Yes, I did. And what is the, what's on that disc? Um, okay, so these particular ones, I know I had two discs that I listened to, so I really do not know which one this one is. Okay. And um, for one of the discs that you listened to, were, well, were both of them, actually, 911 calls that you had made that night on July 20th of 2012. That's correct. And did those calls fairly and accurately represent your entire 911 call? Yes, they did. Your Honor, the, and did you recognize your voice on those recordings? Yes, I did. At this time, I would move for the admission of People's Exhibit Number 1037. Ms. Spengler, any additional objection? Foundation. Um, the uh, foundation objection is overruled. Uh, so with that uh, objection being overruled, uh, the exhibit is admitted and may be published. Thank you, Your Honor. We'd like to play the 911 call for the jury at this time. Okay. 
Okay, there, we have we have multiple officers and, and fire department there. Do you have somebody injured? Yeah, Tell me what's going on. I don't know. I just see people. The lights are on. I see people injured. I need to go. Please come get us out of here, please. There's no one. I don't okay. know what's going on. Okay, where are you? Are you still theater? Yes, I am. Okay, what theater are you in? I think, um, let me look at my ticket real quick. I'm sorry. Oh my god. It is, um, um, house nine, it says. Okay, you're in theater number nine? Yes. Okay, are there still gunshots? Do you still hear gunshots? No, 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 everything is quiet now. People are being able to leave, but people are fine. I'm scared. Okay, just remain, just remain inside the theater. If you're safe there, just remain inside the theater. What is your name? My name is Chichi Paul. I'm here with my husband, too, Derek. Well, okay, are both, of you, are both of you okay? Is there anybody around you injured? I know my husband is okay, and I don't know about anyone else. But I think there yeah, are some people injured, someone in front of me, and like someone on my side. <laughs> okay, did you did you hear gunshots or fireworks? I, I, thought, I think you, I saw fireworks. Saw fireworks? Yeah, that's what I saw. <laughs> okay. We do, like I said, we have multiple opportunities officers on scene and the fire department is on the way with paramedics so just remain in there if you're safe there just remain there and they will come and get you is where you are is where you are full of smoke okay say that again i can't hear you we're crouching on the floor. Okay, and, and is a, there a lot of smoke in there? Uh, yeah, there's no a lot that's choking. Please send help. I think that people need to please send help. Like I said, we have them. There's multiple officers in, on scene, and the fire department is standing by, so we're getting them in there as quickly as we can. They have to secure the scene first, so just remain there. They'll get the fire department in there. Send someone here. Please, please send someone here. Ma'am, can you actually see anyone that's injured around you? The police have come in. The police are there? Yes, I'm sorry. There is a Okay, if there's police officers there, speak with the police. Do what the police tell you to do. Ma'am? Ma'am? Are the police there? Yeah, the police are here. Okay. Listen to the police officers and do what they tell you oh to do. Oh, God. The police are dead everywhere. Ma'am? I'm here. The police are trying to get out of here. Okay. Listen to, listen to the... Go ahead and disconnect. Listen to the police officers and to, 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 to the instructions. Ma'am, come out. Ma'am, listen to the police officers. One of the guys who came here is dead. Oh my god. Which way do we go? Ma'am, go ahead and disconnect with me. Listen to the officer's instructions. Can we come out? Oh. No, but well, it's going on the people we can't make his death. No. Ma'am, I'm going to disconnect with you. Listen to the police officer's instructions. i got to disconnect with you. Ma'am? I'm here. Listen to the police officer's instructions. I have to disconnect with you. Okay. Okay? So you made that 911 call? Yes, I did. Because it's difficult to hear at some point in times, what are you describing that you're seeing around you? Um, I think I'm um, describing that there are people injured, that we're choking, um, that we're crouched down, pretty much. And at some point in time, do you notice that Jesse's dead on that 911 call? Yeah, because when the... Um, 
<laughs> the cops came to get us, the first thing I see is Jesse laying face down in this pool of blood. And, um, the first thing I was just thinking about was I just wanted my husband out of there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, and, and I just remember Derek trying to lift him up, screaming, chill dress, chill dress, money, trying to help him lift um, Jesse up and I'm like the cops and I'm screaming for Derek to, for us to leave because the cops are saying we should leave and he's saying to Moni that they have to go. What'd you do after that? Um, we were um, taking outside to the, um, I guess the pavement. We were with Moni for a little bit before the, they took her away because she was hurt and as soon as we found out that Derek, like all the blood that was on him wasn't his, like then they took us away and I just remember talking to other victims. I remember talking to the pregnant lady <laughs> and her with her husband inside. I remember talking to this other girl because we were all like being moved around, talking to this other girl who said that her fiance was inside like oh my, I'm sorry. Sustain. So you were talking to several people outside the theater? Yes. And were, did you observe any other injured people outside the theater? There were just a lot of people injured. And like the police doing everything, like, like, like the police, like, they, <laughs> the police just holding people into their, their cars because they weren't enough. A blessing for people and people just, it was just, it was, it was, it was just one of those nights, it was crazy. At some point in time, were you moved from the theater to another location? Yes, we were. Where was that? Um, at a high school. What happened at the high school? Um, we were, our statements were taken, uh, our pictures were taking and um, we just there waiting to hear a word regarding Moni and Jesse at that point. What did you learn about what had happened to Moni and Jesse? Um, Mr. Tish McGuire sustained. Did you have an opportunity to know if Moni was injured or not? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. And what did you learn about that? Um, uh, sustained. Thanks, Turner. So, at some point in time, were you notified that Jesse had been killed? Yes, we were. Your Honor, if I may retrieve um, People's Exhibit number 4726 from the court. Yes. Handing you what's been marked as 4726. Do you recognize the person in that photograph? Yes, I do. Who is that? Yes, I do. Um, Jesse Childress. I have no further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Spengler, do you have any questions? I have no questions. All right. Uh, it doesn't look like the jury has any questions either, so... May, uh, there may be a question. Hold on. I'll have you wait, please. Would counsel please approach?
Ma'am, the jury has submitted a question, uh, and I have found, based on the rules of evidence and other applicable rules of law, that it is an appropriate question, and so I'm going to ask it at this time. The question is as follows. How long after the shooting started and the first time you called 911 did it take for police to respond uh, slash come into the theater to start getting people out? Quite honestly, it felt like they were there almost immediately. Like, they were really, like, it just felt like I was on the phone the second time with them. And as I was on the phone, they walked in. It just seemed like they were there. Like, I don't know. It felt like forever at the time, but thinking back to it, they actually did come in pretty quickly. Any follow-up questions based on that question and answer, Ms. Tish No, Your Honor. Any follow-up questions based on that question and answer, Ms. Spengler? No. Okay. May this witness be released from her subpoena? Yes, sir. Any objection? No. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Members of the jury, it's 5 till 12. I said that just to show you that I can tell time. <laughs> uh, I think that rather than start with another witness, it makes sense to take our lunch break now. And so let's plan to take an hour and a half and let's plan to have you back at 125 instead of 130 since it's only 1155. Uh, please keep all my admonishments in mind. This is the first lunch break you have. Uh, you may be tempted to want to talk about the proceedings. Please avoid that temptation. Please also avoid the, temp the temptation to start thinking about the case and forming opinions. Uh, as I told you before, you have to keep an open mind throughout the proceedings. Uh, all the advisements that I've given you before apply during the break. Enjoy the break, and I'll see you back here at 125. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. The record should reflect that we are now outside the presence of the jury. Uh, let me just uh, follow up on one of the objections that was raised with respect to Exhibit 1167, which is a uh, uh, diagram that was presented uh, to Ms. Uh, Sprawl, the last witness who just testified. Uh, the objection, or one of the objections, I should say, was with respect to the words bloody victim being written on the diagram. and. I overruled the objection. I wanted to indicate that later in her testimony, Ms. Sproul mentioned the word victim, and there was no objection. And, and I think that's appropriate. I, I don't think that when people say the word victim, lay people anyway, say the word victim, that they mean anything other than somebody who was injured or killed. And uh, I, I don't think that the meaning is that uh, it goes to um, the defendant's guilt or innocence or anything like that, and I, I am confident that that's not how the jury would, would have taken that either, uh, as it was used in the diagram. So um, I just wanted to, to add to what I had said here at the bench during the uh, conference that we had. Is there anything at this time that we need to address on behalf of the prosecution? Ms. Tish Maguire? All right, thank you for letting me know. Ms. Spengler, are, are you planning to object to either one of those or both of those? Yeah, let me ask you about the 911 calls. Are you okay with me listening to those 911 calls? I am. Not yet.
make sure the record is clear that the um, one call uh, that you get. Correct. So I'll listen to 1036 and 1024 during the break without objection. All right. What else did you have? You, you were not unclear. That, uh, that was the objection. Uh, the term bloody victim, uh, I don't find it to be prejudicial in the context of this case or improper. I mean, I, uh, given what other evidence this jury is going to be presented with, having uh, somebody um, uh, or having a diagram show that someone referred to a bloody victim being on the floor or being somewhere in the theater uh, is, is not... Um, unduly prejudicial or anything improper. Uh, again, this was just the witness's way of explaining what she observed. She observed somebody who was bloody uh, on the, uh, in the theater, and that's what she uh, marked on the, on the diagram. That's what the uh, testimony was, and that's what the evidence is. There, isn't, um, there aren't a whole lot of ways to describe that. Uh, if you see someone who's bloody and who's on the floor, then that's how you're going to describe the person. You're going to describe it as a bloody person or a bloody victim. That's what most people would use to describe that, that type of uh, uh, scene. And, uh, and so I don't find that that is improper or that that somehow rendered the diagram inadmissible under Rule 403. Again, I find that the probative value of the evidence is not substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. All right, Ms. Tish McGuire, do you have the two discs, 1036 and 1024? Yeah, that, yeah. Thank you. You may approach. Is there anything else on behalf of the defense at this time before we break for lunch, Ms. Spengler? Anything else? No? Okay. All right, folks, enjoy your lunch. We'll see you back here after lunch. Thank you. The court will be in recess. Please rise.